It's Vegas Weekly. It's the Black Friday edition. We've got 15 minutes. No cuts. No nets. No takes. Just one shot. And we got a stopwatch. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Vegas Weekly. It is for a Saturday, November the 27th, 2021. As you know, well, you should know, we record this the night before because we have to get up in the morning and go to work. We got up this morning and went to work as well on the uh, lovely Black Friday day that uh, people love to go shopping. Actually, it wasn't so bad. I feel they're kind of getting over that. They're doing it online. But anyway, a couple of things that I wanted to talk about here today, and they're all both, one's going to start kind of a series, we may wrap it up, who knows, we'll see how it goes. And again, there's no, there's no editing with this, so you're just getting what we get. Um, but uh, we're going to continue our virtual strip walk, and we're going to start talking about Vegas alternatives. I'm going to do that in just a minute. Uh, thanks to everybody uh, for their positive feedback on Wednesday's show, giving thanks. If you haven't checked it out, please do. Um, we did, uh, did a podcast on Monday. We're going to do another one this Monday, talking more about Vegas memories. A couple of my earliest trips to Las Vegas and uh, the interesting way that I arrived. You won't want to miss it. Okay, so... For those of us who uh, have been to Vegas a few times, and I'd say probably, depending on who you are, maybe, uh, you know, if you've been maybe five to ten times somewhere in that neighborhood, you've probably, you know, unless you're really set in your ways, have probably kind of, uh, you know, checked out a lot of different Vegas. You know, you've probably spent some time downtown, probably checked off some... Uh, some of the major off-strip resorts. You visited different parts of the Strip. You're pretty comfortable with Vegas. And so your mind starts to think, hmm, I really like going to Vegas. I want to go back to Vegas. But I wonder if there's any place out there that's kind of like Vegas. But, you know, it's in a different setting. Uh, maybe it's not so hot in the summertime. Uh, you know, maybe there's other things to do besides gambling and wander the desert incoherently. But, uh, uh, and I, I know I had that feeling probably back in the early 2000s or, you know, maybe even before that, thinking, hey, you know, it'd be cool. I wonder if there's any other places I could visit that would be a lot like Vegas. So I'm revisiting that topic a good 20 years later and revisiting with it with all of you because I think some of you probably had the same sort of thoughts from time to time. Um, so I, I did a little bit of research, because occasionally for these shows I do a little bit of research, and what I discovered was, uh, I went through and searched for some of the largest gaming markets, not just in the U.S., but in the whole world. And I think most of you probably know this, but by far the largest gaming area anywhere on Earth is not Las Vegas, and it's not even close. It's the little sort of pseudo city state of Macau um, on the uh, edge of China. And it has kind of that same um, weird relationship with China that Hong Kong has. But in the case of Macau, they built this enormous infrastructure of casinos and resorts and everything else that really puts Las Vegas to shame. And uh, it does somewhere, I think, between two and a half and three times as much handle in terms of, uh, of gaming dollars. Most people aren't going to go to Macau, but you know, it's definitely a Vegas alternative if you can afford it. Uh, definitely a different experience, but of course it's drawing from a huge Asian market, as is another large um, non-Vegas um, location, and that's Singapore. If you start looking around the world, you'll discover that most countries have some form of gaming. Um, you know, if you followed any of the UK vloggers, you know there's casinos in and around the, uh, the United Kingdom. A little bit different. A lot of them are kind of gambling parlors and kind of very limited uh, numbers of machines and so forth. But even there, you're starting to see some uh, larger casinos. Uh, France has them. They're really all over the world. But we kind of wanted to focus a little more on the United States because that's a little more realistic for most people, or at least the North American continent. That's where most of the people that watch this uh, program are 
hailing from. Um, the only two markets um, that were in the top 10, basically, on in the North American continent, outside of Las Vegas, were Atlantic City, not so surprising, and Niagara Falls, which I thought was interesting. And Niagara Falls is certainly a, an interesting case study. I've not been there, but I have seen a lot of footage there because um, our friends uh, uh, Kevin and Jen, uh, as well as Mark and Liz, have uh, spent some time in and around Niagara Falls. We've seen some video there. Um, obviously, a big sort of tourist trap, which is how most people would probably describe Las Vegas as well. Uh, I've not heard the best uh, sort of reviews of the casinos there, but it's certainly an option and an alternative. Uh, and uh, so there you go, possibility. Atlantic City, one that I think always comes to mind. Uh, you do have a large concentration of casinos in a fairly small area. Uh, a good portion of it is walkable. Um, it's Again, it's not Vegas in terms of either the number of casinos or the easy accessibility, uh, but you do have the added uh, appeal of the ocean front and, and those things, and um, it is a reasonable alternative. It's near, of course, a lot of major population centers on the East Coast. Most large cities nowadays in the U.S. are near major casinos. If they don't have them in their uh, city limits or very close, uh, they're, you know, within an hour or two away. Um, one of the big exceptions, I think, if you talk about casinos, is the state of Texas. There's really no casinos uh, in Texas to speak of, but um, California, you know, southern, northern, um, obviously Nevada. Most states, if they don't have official sorts of um, uh, approved gaming licenses, have uh, Native American um, casinos, and, uh, you know, which in many cases are just as nice, if not nicer, than a lot of the other ones. Um, one alternative that sometimes comes to mind is Reno, Nevada, and I have been there a couple of times, but Reno is uh, not what it used to be, and maybe it never was, but uh, there used to be at least a good half a dozen, six, seven, eight casinos, if you, you know, include some of the smaller properties, uh, right downtown on Virginia Street, where that little best little city in the world sign is located. Uh, but really, there's not much of anything left downtown anymore. Even the hair is closed, and that's sort of the, the birthplace of that, of that whole company. Um, you know, other than the sort of El Dorado, uh, Silver Legacy, Circus Circus thing, which is, you know, pretty much right downtown. There are a number of large casinos, but again, they're more like driving distance away. And that's what you run into in most casino destinations. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ryan, just came back not too long ago from the Tunica area and checked that out. And again, with a couple of small exceptions, anywhere you go, you're going to have to drive. Um, so that, you know, that's kind of a bummer. I know a lot of people go to Vegas. They like to party. Uh, you know, it's one reason a lot of us don't rent a car because, you know, we rent a car and, uh, you know, you end up having to get cabs to go somewhere anyway because you've had a little too much to drink. So, uh, so again, almost anywhere you want to go, almost any place in the country you want to go, you can find a great casino resort, but can you find that Vegas experience? Not so much. Um... I talked about Niagara Falls, and that's kind of a, a, a good example of another sort of vegas -y kind of experience, and that is that sort of tourist trap thing. And you find those all over the country, whether it be Branson, Missouri, or Gatlinburg, uh, Tennessee. Um, in fact, most again, most large cities are going to have uh, sort of touristy parts of town that have the wax museums and, and the chain restaurants and, 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 you know, all the little kitschy things that we've come to expect from tourist traps. So the real conclusion is that there really isn't anything like Las Vegas out there, anything that's really comparable, if you look at it. Um, you know, so... What do you think? Can you think of any uh, areas? And you know, I'm not just talking about one great casino like, you know, Mohegan Sun or, or one of the Hard Rock properties around the country or San Manuel or, uh, you know, a lot of these properties that we hear about, um, even if we don't live anywhere near them, but about a concentrated area of casinos, preferably walkable, uh, preferably with some sort of... Um, physical beauty up besides the casinos, uh, a good concentration of casinos, 
Uh, if you've got any ideas, uh, hit me up in the comments below. We'll talk about them on next week's show. Hey, we're about 10 minutes in. This is about five minutes to continue our ongoing piece on virtually walking up and down the Las Vegas Strip. And last week we had made our way through the Link Hotel and Experience, or Casino and Experience, whatever they're calling it nowadays. And we had reached the Link Promenade. I want to spend a little bit of time there. In fact, that probably will occupy most of today's walkabout. I think this is one of the most interesting places to just sort of wander around anywhere in Las Vegas. Uh, and, you know, it's not nearly as organic as something like Fremont Street, but it, it does really have a kind of feel like that. There's people day and night wandering around. There's some great people watching. Uh, unlike uh, Fremont Street, it's not really a casino-oriented area, but it's just a lot of bars, restaurants, and shops. And just about anything you want food-wise, you can get it there. There's a place that specializes in hot dogs, uh, pizza. You got an In-N-Out burger. You got, uh, you know, you got the, you got a restaurant there. You got the Tilted Kilt. Uh, you got places that specialize in Mexican food and, uh, you know, in beer. And you know, it's, and, and most of it's fairly reasonably priced. You know, it's sort of fast, casual, that kind of stuff. Um, again, there's nothing here that's mind-blowing, but I really like the way they designed it. Um, there's even little places to kind of sit and chill for a bit. Um, and, and, you know, another great attraction there, if you can make it all the way down to the end of the uh, Link Promenade, is to check out the High Roller, which I, I still will say probably gives you the best views anywhere in Las Vegas. Um, the possible exception, I suppose, of, of some of the South Strip uh, uh, looks uh, from, uh, you know, the top of like Mandalay Bay or Delano or something. But... Otherwise, it's a pretty good one, and it's reasonably priced, and you can sometimes find some deals. Maybe you can get that one where they give you like a half hour of free booze. So, but yeah, Link Promenade, I think definitely worth your time. You're almost certain to find something there that's interesting to you, whether it's food or beverage or shopping. Next up, you will make your way, and there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, there is an entrance from the Link Promenade that will take you into the venerable Flamingo Hotel and Casino. Or if you'd rather, you can kind of walk around the front of the uh, promenade and uh, back onto Las Vegas Boulevard, which will take you in front of the Margaritaville, uh, which used to be its own sort of casino within a casino. Um, either way, you'll end up inside the Flamingo, uh, occasionally a much maligned property. It's definitely, uh, I guess you could say, has seen better days, but remains a very popular destination uh, for several reasons. It's a great location. It, uh, it, it's very reasonably priced. And you've got some really nice attractions on site. Uh, it's, it's one of the larger sort of pools in town um, and still uh, a fun sort of pool environment compared really to most, almost any other property in that area and certainly almost any other property in that price range. So you've got the, the uh, wildlife habitat out back where you can walk around and see, you know, I don't know, penguins and flamingos and things like that. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of relaxing. So um, definitely a worthwhile place to stop in and gamble a little bit, um, even if it's not the classiest spot in town. Um, finally, as you reach, are heading towards the corner of Flamingo and Las Vegas Boulevard, having exited the Flamingo Hotel and Casino, you will find yourself more or less pushed through the Cromwell. The Cromwell used to be uh, the Barbary Coast, and it was Bill's Gambling, Rootin', Tootin', Shootin', Casino, and Hotel. It remains a very worthwhile property. Um, a little upscale, but really nice rooms if you can afford it. Uh, very quiet, uh, except when they have the crazy, you know, parties at the pool and so forth. But uh, uh, in a great, great location and really easy access from your room to the street. It's a fun place. It's a friendly place. And, um, you know, it's definitely one place worth checking out. Okay, we're going to have to wrap that up today. We'll continue the strip walk next week. Until then, hope you have a great, lucky, and healthy week. We will see you soon. Bye-bye.